What you see up here on the screen are the buildings that at the time of their completion held a very unique title. They were the world's tallest building at the time. That meant the engineers, instead of interpolating, extrapolated what they were doing. And extrapolation is always a challenge. It keeps us awake at night. But it's a creation of something big. Because as I said, with the young kids with blocks, we have always wanted to build bigger. It is always the dream of mankind to build bigger. Then, of course, there is a new kid on the block, the Burj Khalifa. It is certainly not one footmanship. But I do a lot of presentations, as I said, to the younger generation, the next generation, to inspire them to do what we do. And I was doing a presentation to a group of seventh graders, and one student in the back of the room raised his hand, probably trying to impress his teacher, and said, Larry, I noticed, though, if I, there must have been learning graphing, if I plot the time of completion of these buildings that go back to 1908 to now, and I plot them against their height, we kind of reached a peak at the Sears Tower and World Trade Center, and all the buildings after that had been about the same height, except for Birch. If I plot them together, I get a straight line now, which kind of implies that we have a linear growth function with height, which begs the question, how tall of a structure will we be going to next? Go a little bit into the history of high rises. Um, I'm going to take you to Chicago, a city of big shoulders, as Carl Sandburg once said in 1916 where a lot of the original high-rises began their life. One of the first recognized skyscrapers of their time was the Home Insurance Building, a whopping 10 stories. And it was then since demolished in 1931. But at that time, all the modern systems that we imagine in a high-rise were coming together. The building frame, the elevatoring system, the HVAC, so that you could get, you know, circulation in there. Not necessarily conditioning yet, but certainly circulation. And even the life safety issues of how do you get people out of the building. Though interestingly enough, when the building was demolished and people looked at a lot of the photos, it was considered by um, Professor Condit at Northwestern University that the building still, even though we think it had a moment frame, still had a masonry shear wall and other load bearing elements of buildings before its time. So that we can no longer argue that the home insurance building was the true first skyscraper. Even though all the elements had started to come together, they still had some items from the past. Because as structural engineers, we tend not to make giant leaps. We keep with what we know. But where does this leave us with a true initial first skyscraper? Well, actually, that, that then takes us to the first reinforced concrete high-rise, which is, could also be the first full high-rise. It has the true system of what we think of a high-rise. This is the Ingalls Building in Cincinnati, Ohio, 16 stories tall. The predecessor before this was much shorter, half its height. And you can see here, just by looking at the picture, you can see a true punched wall or moment frame in the perimeter. Truly a light load carrying type procedure. This building was so tall that prominent engineers at the time said it would not stand. It was shored all the way up to the 16th story. And the day they were to remove the shores, the local Reporter and photographer stayed up all night to get the story and the photo of the collapse. Needless to say, it did not collapse. It is still standing and profitable today. High strength concrete tended to drive a lot of the increases in height in several buildings. We could go down the steel route, which would leave us to lead us to the Sears Tower, John Hancock Centers. 
Um, let's take a look at the concrete route, which is less spoken about, and we'll look at some of those buildings. My father is a structural engineer, and to him, high strength concrete was 5,000. Today, we use much, much stronger. Even in 1954, we used 6,000 concrete in Chicago on Lakeshore Drive. Then in 62 came the East Condominiums on Outer Drive of Randolph. It's 6,000 reaching to story, 40 stories. We're now starting to make leaps and bounds in heights and strengths, both fueling each other. The DeWitt Chestnut Building in 63, the first true tube building, you can see it. These are structures that literally wear their structural system on their sleeve. You can tell them from a distance.